I would now like to transition to the final part of our program today, the Representative Citizen of the Year, and briefly explain the process and qualifications it takes to be chosen for the award. As you might imagine, there are a number of folks to consider each year, but there is a committee composed of previous recipients. We meet early in the year and offer candidates, and then we ultimately vote on the year's winner. This person best represents the overall qualities we value in a citizen and their volunteer efforts. They also look the span of years the candidates contribute and the value of the service throughout the entire city. Additional preference is how their leadership was beneficial, how broad-based their service was. Once chosen, the names are forwarded to the mayor. This year was altogether unique, as we'll present here in a moment. In the meantime, I would like to honor all past representative citizens that are in the audience. Would you please stand and be recognized? Thank you for your continued commitment to the city. In 2016, Bob and Becky Hardman were the recipients of the Rep Representative Citizens Award. Please welcome Bob Hardman to present the 2017 Representative Citizen of the Year. As a citizen of Cedar Falls, I can tell you I'm honored to present a tribute to John Cruz, 2017 representative citizen. Several years ago, in his newspaper column, Scott Coelty labeled our 2017 representative citizen a common sense good-hearted man. Indeed, over the span of his adult life, John Cruz showed himself to be just that. The nation's youngest mayor at 22, John's continuing years as mayor of the city put that statement to the test and probably made him the most recognizable citizen in Cedar Falls. We greatly miss his presence here today to receive this award. Traditionally, the Representative Citizen Award goes to someone heavily involved in volunteer work, mostly unrelated to his or her occupation. In John's case, his calling to be of service to the community resulted in successfully running for mayor in 16 elections and serving 30 out of 44 years in that position. Over those years, he was willing to put himself on the line to help grow and develop this community we are all proud of. Born in Waterloo to parents who were small business owners, John, his parents, and three siblings moved to Cedar Falls in 1952. Graduating from Cedar Falls High School, he received an appointment to West Point, but after a year and a half, decided in tra to transfer to UNI, receiving a BA degree in social science, an MA degree in history in the 1970s, and an MBA in 1991. During the years John was not serving as mayor, he sold insurance, worked for John Deere, was county treasurer, and on the city council. This range of experience was reflected in his support of local projects and his interest in new and innovative ideas. Time and again, when John would be approached by someone with an idea for community betterment, he would form a task force or committee to investigate and make proposals. That's how projects like the Community Foundation, the Blue Zone, the New Library and Community Center, the Hearst Center, the CFU CyberNet System, and the Industrial Park became realities. Under John's leadership, 
the city of Cedar Falls gave support to downtown and College Hill revitalization, the, the aquatic center, the rec center, and the bike system, a project which was especially close to his heart. It's no wonder Cedar Falls has received numerous awards, among them being ranked fourth best small city in the nation for a diverse overall quality of life. Noted for showing up and being present at a multitude of public events, ranging from athletics and artistic and cultural offerings, John found time for participation in Rotary and Lions Clubs, Cedar Valley Alliance, Love Inc., the UNI Alumni Association, and was a huge Panther fan. As mayor, he encouraged community involvement in the vibrant lifestyle offered to our citizens. John's wife, Ronell Langley, says she was attracted to him by his humility, his intellect, and his caring spirit. They have a blended family of six children and seven grandchildren, with four of their children having graduated from Cedar Falls High School, John and Ronell were also Cedar Falls High School Booster Club and School Foundation supporters. A recent interest for them as a couple was their involvement in the MIT program called Leading from the Emerging Future. Even in retirement, John was continuing to envision new things. During John's illness these past months, many wrote to him about their gratitude for his support and interest in them as citizens with special needs. Common sense, a good heart, served John well in this community for which he had such deep affection. He recently told Rennell, if I had to make a speech, it would be three words. I love you, to you, to my family, and to Cedar Falls. As a leader and as a citizen, it's clear, John Cruz left the legacy of that love to the people of his city who will continue to reap the benefits for many years to come. Please welcome Rennell and son Ryan to the stage. of John and our family thank you. We are deeply touched by the outpour of love and support that we received in this time. It was also a request from John that I introduce our six children from the blended family to you today. Five of them can be here. Um, Jenny, she is from Nina, Wisconsin and a property manager for senior citizens. Um, in uh, lower income and her family and Ryan who is here with me. Ryan is an assistant professor in podiatry at um, Rosalind Franklin University in Chicago and his family. Michael cannot be here uh, because he lives in Georgia. He is a, a teacher in video production at a high school and then Lindy is here and she is an assistant professor in business management at Waterbrook College. Then we have Rulay, who is working in payroll uh, in HR at Grundy Center Hospital. And we have David, who is graduating in business management um, at the end of this semester in May from the University of Northern Iowa. And at this point, I want to hand over to Ryan because John asked him on behalf of the family to do his acceptance speech. John started off, he had one paragraph and Ryan took it from there. Ryan. I'm 
You've heard the uh, term cruise speak thrown around a couple times recently. I will try and stay on focus if you can just bear with me here for a few minutes. Um, throughout Chicagoland, where I'm from, there's a number of Iowa transplants other than myself, one of whom is currently actually running the Bulls. Now, by NBA standards, it would be pretty fair to say that my father was vertically challenged <laughs> and would probably never make a position actually playing for the Bulls. However, he did have something in common with former player and current coach Fred Hoiberg. Starting his college playing days on through his coaching career, Hoiberg has been known as the mayor of Ames. In Cedar Falls, there are many mayors before, and there will be many mayors after John Cruz, and we're lucky to have one on stage with us today. But for those of us lucky enough, lucky enough to have seen just an inkling of the pride my father had in this town, he will always retain the moniker of the mayor. He was a tireless supporter of all acts of community, whether they were artistic, athletic, or civic in nature. Whether it was an event at the Gallagher Blue Dorm or simply a child running a lemonade stand, he was likely to make an appearance to show his support. Shortly after hearing he'd been awarded this tremendous honor, my father humbly told me, you're not supposed to get this award for doing your job. But in truth, being mayor wasn't a job to my father. It was a calling. A job is a 9-5 stent that you repeat Monday through Friday in order to collect a check. My father was never off the clock as a mayor. Both in times of joy and tribulation, his thoughts were occupied with appreciating the amazing city he loved and considering ways to help it continue thriving. When a citizen had, when a, citizen had a concern, he would listen, and although it's never possible to please everyone, I know he always acted in what he felt was the best interest of the community. I'd like to now share a few sentiments directly from my father. The representative citizen is truly representative of community and that it is the coming together of people for goodwill. In accepting this award, I represent many Cedar Falls citizens who have contributed to the great community that we have become. It has truly been an honor to serve with so many of you on projects like our recreational trails, industrial parks, the recreation center, the library, historical society endeavors, and the revitalization of downtown and the hill. Thanks to those in attendance for all you have done and will continue to do. In considering honors, I am truly honored to have so much family here and want to say thank you to them for their continued support over the years. In closing, I never viewed my father as a politician. His eyes were never set on power, fame, or admiration. He was a civil servant with his attention squarely set on helping Cedar Falls become the best, the best version of itself. And so as we leave here today, I encourage and challenge all of you to do the same.